Okay. Uh, okay. Um, this is um, Parshas Doshim. Also, this week is uh, Yom Atzmut. I'll touch on it. I just want to mention that the this year is dedicated in memory of Frank Borg, Ephraim Ben Moshe, who's a member of my shul. But in addition to being a member of my shul, he was he was a very close friend. And you know, you have friends that the, you they're in your mind when they're there. And there are friends that uh, the that they're always there, even after they passed away. Frank died at a very young age, but he's one of those people that you that one constantly remembers. He was not just my friend; he was everybody's friend. But uh, we had an especially close relationship, and he's somebody that we constantly miss. Now. This week's uh, Sedra is Pasha's Doshim. And Pasha's Doshim, they talk, Torah talks about the mitzvah of Orla and Netaravai. And the Torah says, if you shabbat el aretz, it'll be when you come to the land, meaning to the land of Israel. Major says, it's, uh, I mean, the, the, that it's talking about when you enter. Eretz Yisrael proper, not just the Aver Yard. And, and, uh, but, Unetatem Kolets Macho, and, and you shall plant any food tree. I saw it brought down in the name of the Vilna Goen. I don't know if the Vilna Goen really said it. The uh, sources weren't mentioned, but, uh, that the Vilna Goen said, the Gross said that, he he look he looks forward. He would like very much to to come into the land of Eretz Yisrael and to plant a fruit tree. Apparently, he considered it a special mitzvah of planting a tree in Eretz Yisrael. Uh, what the nature of that mitzvah might be, we'll discuss. Although that's not the topic of this year. It will come out during the pro, uh, while when I'm giving the share, but and then varal temes are lasso, and uh, you you the uh, you, you shall treat its fruit as if it's forbidden for three years. Alasa spirio shaloshanim yelochem arelin lo yayochem. So for three years, it should be like forbidden fruit, and you should not eat it. However, in the fourth year, so you, uh, in the fourth year, that's the midst of Netarai. It's the fruit shall be sanctified, and uh, 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 shall be uh, shall be the the you shall uh, the the fruit shall be sanctified. And uh, to to give thanks or to praise Hakadosh Baruch Hu, to praise God, and in the fifth year, it's it's just regular fruit. So, but in the fourth year, you had to take the fruit that grew on the tree, and bring it to Yerushalayim, and there in the fourth year, and eat it there in Yerushalayim. However, uh, if a person was not able he lived outside Yerushalayim, and there was great difficulty in taking the fruit to Yerushalayim. So what he could do is he could he could take the fruit and take some some money coins and be mechalal transfer the dusha the sanctity of the fruits of the fourth year onto the coins, and then take the money take the money. And when he goes to Yerushalayim and buy food there in Yerushalayim and eat it there. So we have two mitzvahs here. One is a mitzvah, a prohibition, I should say, of Orla. 
not to eat the fruit of the tree the first three years it was planted. And then in the fourth year, you were allowed to eat the fruit, but the fruit had to be taken to Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem, to be eaten. And, and if it was not eaten, uh, or you could transfer the sanctity of the fruit of the fourth year, because the fruit of the fourth year was considered holy, and you could transfer the dusha, the sanctity of the fruit, onto the money, and th- eventually take that money and go to Jerusalem and, and buy food there and eat that food in place of the, of the fruit of the fourth year. And in that case, the fruit of the fourth year, after you transfer the dusha, the sanctity of the fruit of the fourth year onto the money, you can eat the fruit wherever they were. This is the, this is the mitzvah of, of Orla, the first three years, and that to Revai on the fourth year. Now, uh, the, 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 uh, there is a question. Uh, so, so the question is, first I'll, I'll deal with the, the Tam HaMitzvah. What is the logic behind this mitzvah? And I, I, I would like to add that, uh, okay, what is the logic, the, the rationale, if I could call it, behind the mitzvah? Of course, all the mitzvahs are commands of God. And whether we understand the reason for it or we don't understand the reason for it, and whether this is the reason or it's just a lesson that we can deduce from it, those are questions we can always ask. But the, the Rambam explains it. That and the Rambam has a tendency when he explains the different mitzvahs of the Torah, there is a tendency to explain the mitzvahs as a negation of the idolatrous practices that existed among the nations of the world, primarily in the time of Avram Avinu. Sometimes that existed even after that time, the time the Jewish people left the Egypt. And sometimes even even uh, uh, after that, but the but primarily it was based on the negation of the practices of the idolatrous nations at the time of our ancestor Abraham. Now, so the Rambam says that there was a practice among some of the idolatrous nations. At that time, in the time of Avram, to to uh, to the first three years, they they would use the the uh, the fruit either to sacrifice it to God, some of it, and the rest of it they would take to their temple, and they would. And they would eat it in their temple in front of the, uh, uh, as part of the idolatrous ritual. So because of that, as a negation of that practice, the Torah said three years, you, the, the, the fruits are not permitted. The fruits are to be destroyed. And, and then the, the, um, the, the, uh, uh, the, and then on the fourth year, we take the fruit, we take it to Jerusalem, and we eat it in Jerusalem. And all this is as a negation of the practices of the Umos Olam, of the nations of the world. Now, the Ramban, many, many have a lot of trouble with the Ramban. And they have trouble with not just with the logic as the Rambam describes it in regard to the mitzvah, the prohibition of Orla, and the mitzvah of Netta Revai, but they have problems with the general attitude of the Rambam. Let's say, for example, the Rambam says that uh, part of the, the, the reason for the mitzvah of Karbanos is a negation of the practices of the Obey of the Zara, the idolatrous nations at that time. 
a some some of midst of Kalayim of Kalayim is uh, planting uh, certain seeds together that are not allowed to be planted together. So again, the Rambam saw that as a ritual that existed among idolatrous nations. And because of that, the Torah prohibited it. So they say, the Torah is, in, is everlasting. It's for every generation. So why is it? So it, it seems strange that we should attribute a reason to the mitzvahs of the Torah that, that had to do with the time of Avraham Avinu, even if it had to do with the time of the of Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah, but the Torah was given for every generation, even for our generations when they are, the, these practices of the idolatrous for its nations don't, no longer exist, there's no longer a concern. But I think that as far as the Rambam Shita is concerned, I probably have mentioned it time and time again. In other words, the Torah wants us to identify with Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu was our ancestor. He was the one that, in a sense, was the father of the Jewish people. He was the foundation of the Jewish nation. He's the one, as I mentioned, Pesach time, that, that was the, the initiator, to the one who initiated our separation. It starts with Pasha's Lechacha. Lechacha me'atzacha mimoladcha be'sabicha la'aretz ha'sherecha. I'll take you to the, to the land that I'll show you. Separate yourself. And even though the Jewish people have to be concerned, about all of mankind, as we see Avram, even after he separated himself from his nephew Lot, he runs and risks his life to save Lot. Avram sits at the doorway of his tent because someone might be passing by in the desert and need to eat or drink. He's concerned about the welfare of all of mankind. But nevertheless, he understood that he had to form a separate nation of dedication to God. And it was by the formation of this separate nation that the Jewish people were able to influence mankind. They were B'ni B'chori Yisrael. They became, they became the the trailblazers in letting the world know about God and then and then serving God. Now, but the, the Torah wanted us, I think, according to the Rambam, to identify with Avram Avinu. And Avram Avinu, he he had the struggle, Echar Avram Avinu. He was one person. One person against the whole world. Avram Ivri, that Kala Ola Echad. The whole world was on one side and he was on the other side. He was able to maintain his individuality when it came to serving Hakadosh Baruch Hu and coming to serve God. So, and he demonstratively, Avram demonstratively uh, negated the service of the idols. And when he comes in Territ Yisrael, he he's by coming in Territ Yisrael, he establishes a special relationship. He establishes a special relationship with God. And the Torah wants us to identify with Avram. One hand, we have to know because the Jewish people throughout their history, time and time again, we have to be able to overcome the influences of the nations. Sometimes we have to do it on a national level. Because even when we have our own country, 
Sometimes we want to be like the other nations of the world. How does the Torah, when Torah talks about Torah says that a Simolai Melech, that you'll want a king. Why? It's a mitzvah to have a king. But when we're going to ask for a king, unfortunately, how are we going to ask for it? I want to be like the other nations. So there is this, this tendency to want to be like the other nations. So we have to know how to separate ourselves. We have to be identified with Avram Avinu's struggle. So because of that, many of the mitzvahs of the Torah are identified with Avram Avinu's struggle against the idolatrous nations. But I think it's more than just that. And I mentioned this when we discussed the Haggadah. We say in the Haggadah, From the very beginning, our ancestors were idol worshippers. And now God brought us close to his service. And the question is, the question is, uh, why does it say Meitchila from the beginning, but Bitchila at the beginning? Avram Avinu is the beginning. So I think that, that the, the idea is, and I've mentioned it, that Avram Avinu, when, when uh, He's to serve as an example for all of us because there are times we find ourselves tested. And it's very interesting. The Mitchil of the Avodah Yu Avasenu is said in the Haggadah after the Arba Banim, after the four sons. And in reality, we do not answer the Ben Rasha. But we don't give up on the Ben Russia. We don't give up on the rebellious son. Because we remember our ancestor Avram. Avram serves as an example. And in a sense, Avram changed. But we also very often have to change. We also, if we do not have to deal with idolatry, we have to do with other forms of assimilation. Sometimes we recognize it as assimilation. And sometimes we choose to ignore the impact that assimilation has upon us. So So the Torah wants us, the Torah wants us to identify. The Torah wants us to identify with our ancestors, with Avram Avinu. And God brought him, and not just brought him, brought us together with him into his service. And in a sense, that's, that's the Orla. Orla. Orla represents the breaking, the negation of the, of the idolatrous nations. And that to revive, what is not to revive? That to revive is we take the fruits of the fourth year that have, that have been bestowed with holiness and we take them to Jerusalem. It's interesting that the Gemara and Brachas suggest as a possibility that we learn out the mitzvah of saying a bracha from Netarevai, when we take the Netarevai, where do we, where do we eat the Netarevai? And the same thing is true about Meiser Shani. Where do we eat the Meiser Shani? We eat it in Jerusalem, in the place where God's presence is most apparent. It's not just that when we make a bracha, perhaps it's not just the halacha law of making a bracha. It's not just the halacha of, of making the food that, as some suggest, that till now was prohibited. And now it becomes permissible to us. But the, it's, it's more than that. 
It endows the meal, it endows the eating with the sense that we're eating before God, that God is there. It represents to a certain degree the sanctification of the mundane, sanctifying the physical. Um, the the uh, the we 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 uh, the halach is I mentioned that 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 uh, sukkis sukkis comes immediately after Yom Hakippurim, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the and, and the sukkis sukkis is on the fifteenth of Tishrei, and Yom Hakippurim is on the 10th of Tishrei. And the command to the Jewish people, Rabbi David Svi Hoffman points this out, the command to the Jewish people to, to get the carbon Pesach, the, the Jews were, it was on the 10th, they had to get the animal, the, the lamb that was going to be sacrificed. But when was it eaten? It was eaten on the 15th. In other words, the 10th is the preparation for the 15th. Rabbi David Svi Hoffman says that the, 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 uh, the, 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 just like by Tishrei, just like by Nisan, the first Nisan, the first Pesach, the 10th was the preparation for the 15th. In a similar manner, Yom HaKippurim is a preparation for Sukkot. What's the idea that it's a preparation for Sukkot? It's a preparation for Sukkot in the sense, what is Sukkot? Sukkot is that we live, we dwell in huts that represent Anani HaKavot, that represent the clouds of glory. And more than that, it, the Gemara says it's like the carbon Chagiga. It's, it, it, it has the sanctity, the Sukkot has the, a similar sanctity. Of course, it's all to, there's a big difference. With with the carbon with the with the carbon with the sacrifice, and what do we do in a sukkah? A sukkah is not the place where we daven necessarily. Of course, you could daven in a sukkah, but the sukkah was made to live our normal life, and it represents the sanctification of the mundane. Yom Hakippurim is a preparation. Yom Hakippurim, we rise above the physical world. But that doesn't, that is not the goal. The goal is to re-enter this world. And, and in a sense, that's the idea of brach also. I think brach is not just something we do to make, to make the food permitted to us. But it, in a sense, sanctifies our act of eating. It's interesting, the Gemara and brachas, suggests, he said, that we have a contradiction between two psukim, between two verses. One verse says, HaShemayim Shemayim LaShem V'aretz Nasan L'Vnei Adam. The heavens was, is for God, but the land was given to man. And the other pasuk, the other verse says, LaShem V'aretz Loa, to God is the land, and everything in it. And the Gemara says there's a contradiction. And the Gemara says, kan kodem bracha, kan lacha bracha. This is before the bracha, before you recite the blessing, and this is after you recite the blessing. Most commentators understand that to mean that before you recite the blessing over the fruit to a certain degree, the fruit is not yours, it belongs to God. But when does it become yours? It becomes yours after you make the bracha. But my father suggested a different explanation. It doesn't work out according to all Rishonim, but it, just the reverse. On the contrary, the purpose of the bracha is not to take the fruit away from God, but on the contrary, to endow it with spirituality. Before the bracha, it's for Aretz Nasan Levnei Adam. God gave the land to man. But it's man's task, man's challenge 
to imbue the physical world with spirituality. When you make the bracha, so you imbue it with spirituality. When you eat it, you're eating it in front of God. And in a sense, that is the halacha of Netarevai. The halacha of Netarevai is imbuing with spirituality. And this is what Avram, Avram fought idolatry. But God said, I want to establish a personal relationship with you. You come with me, Teret Yisrael. And it's very interesting. So, so Avram, Avram establishes that personal relationship. And in a sense, Netarvai could be understood from that perspective also, that we're eating it before God. We, in a sense, represent, making a connection with God with the mundane aspects of our life. And it's interesting, my, uncle, my father and my uncle would point out that when you take a look at the Rambam, Sefer Dusha, the Book of Holiness, of course it could be explained just in the reverse, but the Book of Holiness deals with the most mundane aspects of life. Hilchos, Macholas Asuros, the prohibit, prohibited, uh, prohibited uh, things for eating, what you're not allowed to eat. And also, Hilchos Yisurabiya, prohibited relationships. This deals, Dusha sanctity manifests itself in the most mundane forms of life because sanctity, the purpose of sanctity was not to remove oneself completely from this world. But on the contrary, the purpose of sanctity was to imbue the mundane with spirituality. So I think that's the, that's the, that's the understanding of the Rambam Shita. And this is what Avram Avinu did. In other words, it's identification with Avram. But Avram first, he fights with the old Abodazara. He fights, not, not in a sense of a military battle, but Avram has, he from every, as the Rambam says, every place he went, he spoke against idolatry. And he's going to Israel, he develops a personal relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with God. And then, but the Ramban, he gives a different explanation. And the Ramban's explanation is that actually the fruits in the first year are not good. In fact, he says that the fruits in the first three years might even be detrimental to a person's health. And, but then the first fruits that are okay, that are good, so that you have to, in a sense, that recognizes Kadosh as holy, and that you dedicate, that you dedicate to God. And the the uh, so this is according to Ramban, we could suggest this uh, will come out afterwards. We could suggest that the whole purpose of of Orla. The purpose of our law is, in a sense, to, boy, I shouldn't say the whole purpose. Part of the purpose of our law, of the prohibition of our law, is to, for, to, to bring, to appreciate, in a sense, appreciate the, 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 uh, the fruit of the fourth year, to appreciate the fruit of the fourth year, in a sense, to the, to show I, I, to show to show that we take the good fruit that 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 represents our relationship with God and the fruit that that the, that is identified as inferior or perhaps even not healthy that's something that we don't need we want our first fruits to be dedicated to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to sanctification of the mundane. And because of that, the fruits of the first three years 
we do not eat. But the, uh, so this could be understood very well from the perspective that the, 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 uh, the, the it is the netaravai, it is the, it is the mitzvah of netaravai of the fourth year that is the cause for the prohibition of the first three years. Okay, but that, that, that would be a controversial uh, the other reasons are given for it also. Some say that in a sense, it is associated with the Eitz Hadas, that the, the Medrash seems to indicate that, that other Marishon, other Marishon, uh, he, 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 he ate from the Eitz Hadas uh, on the first day. And, and they sort of say, this is sort of like a tikkun on that. In other words, for three years, we do not, for three years, we do not eat from the fruits of the tree. For the three, and the, again, the, the part of the idea is to show what, why do you have to wait? Uh, in other words, it's to, it, it also, it's a demonstration of the fact that it belongs to God. It's not automatically ours. It's not automatically ours. And then um, the okay. So so this is the these are the reasons. But there is the Gemara mentions in Dushin and other places. When you take a look at the Torah, the Torah talks seems to indicate. That the mitzvah of Orla and Netaravai, that only applies the prohibition of three years and the fourth year, that applies to Eretz Yisrael. Because the expression of the Torah is, he el aritz, when you come to the land, when, when you come to the land. So the Torah identifies it with the Jewish people coming to the land of Israel, crossing the Jordan, entering into the land of Avram Avinu. So, but the, the, uh, the uh, uh, but the Gemara says, the, uh, the Gemara says that there's a halacha Moshe Misinai, there was an oral tradition that was given over to Moshe at Sinai that while the Pasuk talks about entering Eretz Yisrael, but nevertheless, the same law with, with certain differences applies to the fruit of Kutzlar it's also. That means that if I plant a tree in my backyard, so the first three years that that tree is planted, I cannot partake of the food. So, but there are differences, but then there is a disagreement between the Rambam and the Gaonim. The Rambam says that the mitzvah of Netaravai, of the fourth year, taking the foods to Israel or redeeming the fruits and using the money to buy food to eat in Eretz Yisrael, in Yerushalayim, excuse me, to eat in Yerushalayim, that only applies, that only applies to the fruits that are grown in Eretz Yisrael, that were grown in the land of Israel. But the, the other, uh, the, the, uh, but in, as far as Chutzlaretz is concerned, as far as uh, uh, the fruit grown in Eretz Yisrael is concerned, so that halacha does not apply. But the the that's the opinion, that's the opinion of the of the Rambam. However, the opinion of the Gonim, and the Rambam mentions the Gonim, and Ravachi Gonim in the Shultas mentions it, is that the that the mitzvah uh, uh, the the halo, that the halacha Moshe Misinai comes and tells me. Not only does it apply to the prohibition of Orla of the first three years, out, even outside the land of Israel, but it comes and tells me that even outside the land of Israel, you have to take the fruit of the fourth year 
and take it to Yerushalayim. When I speak about Yerushalayim, I'm talking about Jerusalem, when the walls of Jerusalem were up. Uh, it's not talking about contemporary Jerusalem. And to eat it there. And or, again, to transfer the sanctity of the fruit to, to, to coins, uh, to money, and to eventually, when you go to Jerusalem, to buy food in Jerusalem and, and eat the food there in place of those fruit. So this is the, uh, this is the argument, the, uh, the, this, the, uh, this is the argument between the Rambam and the Golden. Now, Reb Chaim, my great-grandfather, he tried to explain it. He said, we have to understand, what was the Rambam's opinion? What was the, what, what did the, was the opinion of the Rambam? And, and he, because he said it didn't apply to outside the land of Israel, not to revive. The fourth year, only the first three years applied. And the opinion of the Gonim, who said, that outside Eretz Yisrael, it apply, it both apply, the, the prohibition of the first three years, as well as the requirement of the fourth year to take the fruit to food to Jerusalem or its substitute and to eat it there. So how, how are we to understand it? So my great-grandfather Abraham said, this oral tradition what does this oral tradition come and tell us? So according to the Rambam, the oral tradition has nothing to do with this Parsha. It just tells us there is another prohibition, a prohibition of Orla, a prohibition of the fruit of the first three years that applies outside the land of Israel as well. And in a sense, perhaps, we could identify that also. This is just my own feeling. We could identify it with Avram Avinu, because Avram Avinu, before he comes to the land of Israel, he does not yet establish his personal relationship with God. He recognizes God. He recognizes that idolatry is foolishness, that idolatry is leading man astray. And he begins his battle against idolatry. As a matter of fact, I saw some say that the reason there's a prohibition of, uh, of Orla for three years, because according to some Medrashim, Avram began to recognize God at the age of three. So, but the personal relationship, the sense of being constantly, that sense of closeness to God, that begins with Avram going to Eretz Israel, going to the land of Israel. So we could perhaps understand that Shita uh, figuratively uh, in, the, in that same manner. But, but, the, uh, 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 but from a halachic perspective, Reb Chaim said, the, the Psukim, the Torah, have only referenced Eretz Yisrael. It's not talking outside the land of Eretz Yisrael. There seems to be difficulty from the Gemara and Dushan with that the reading, but that's that's what the that's that's the way that's the way Reb Chaim understood the Rambam's opinion that the Psukim, the verses in the Torah, are talking about the law in Eretz Yisrael, but there is an oral tradition with a different prohibition regarding the first three years, even outside the land of Israel. However, Reb Chaim said, the Gonim say no, the oral tradition came and told us that with certain limitations, when the Psukim speak about Eretz Yisrael, the same laws, the Torah is also talking about outside the land of Eretz Yisrael. But there are some minor differences between the two. So therefore, it was more explicit about Eretz Yisrael than outside the land of Israel. Now, there is a question. Uh, 
my my uncle, my mother's brother, Rabbi Yisrael Shuren, is safer. I think Paul Minchas Yisrael. He raises a question. He told me that uh, that when he against Reb Chaim, that when he raised this question, he mentioned that it was in the summer and he was in the same uh, area in the Catskills as Ramosha Feinstein. And he mentioned the question against Reb Chaim to Ramosha Feinstein. And Ramosha Feinstein agreed with him uh, against the logic of Reb Chaim. All right, but in any case, the question was, there is a halacha. Then we go to a Melchemes Harishus. When we go to a, a war. It's not a war of mitzvah, but it's a, 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 the, it's not a war against Hamolek. It's not a war against the seven nations. It's not a, 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 a where we were attacked first, but sometimes it becomes necessary to, to prevent a nation from attacking us, of having the potential to attack us especially where we know that they might try to use that potential. So, or for whatever reason, we have to expand the boundaries of the land of Israel. So, so there, there are all kinds of conditions. Be very difficult. You have to get permission from heaven for that type of war either through a prophet or through the Yom but the, the and then the Kohen, the Shuach Muhammad, he would go up and he would make announcements. Who was exempt? Who did not have to go to the army to fight the war? And among those that were exempt was a person who, who planted a vineyard below Chilolo, and he did not yet partake of it. Um, the the uh, uh, who was the one 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 who was the who was the man who planted a vineyard and not redeemed it, let him go and return, return to, uh, 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 let, let him go and return to, uh, let him return to his house, because lest another person will redeem it. So it's a, the Roshalmi says, this only applies to, to a, uh, a, a vineyard, a vineyard of a mitzvah, a vineyard that is a, 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 a that they, that the, in other words, if a person did not yet use the fruit of the fourth year, if a person did not yet use the fruit of the fourth year, below Philo, he did not yet use the fruit of the fourth year. But if he did not, if he's in, if he is in the thir- three years, or he didn't redeem the fruit of the fourth year yet, so then, then he he does not have to go. He does not have to go to battle. He does not have to go to battle now. So the question is, and the and the Yerushalmi says this is only a vineyard in the land of Israel, but a vineyard that's not in the land of Israel. That that it's in Chutzlar, it's it doesn't apply. Because it's only where it's a chul shal mitzvah, where there is a mitzvah in redeeming it. Now, according to the Gonim, according to the Gonim, the 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 what, is, what the Torah says about the fruits of Eretz Yisrael applies to the fruits that grew outside Eretz Yisrael also. So, just as the Torah says in regard to the fruits of Eretz Yisrael. That, that is prohibited for three years. So the Torah is in effect telling us also that the fruits of the fourth year, the fruits of the fourth year have to be brought to Jerusalem or be redeemed. 
So the mitzvah should apply the mitzvah that's mentioned in Parshat Goshim in our Sedra regarding the fruits of the fourth year of redeeming it or taking it to Jerusalem should apply not only to the fruits in the land of Israel, but even to the fruits that were grown outside the land of Israel. This was the question that my uncle, Rabbi Yisrael Shuren, mentioned, and he gives an answer. He, 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 he suggests he uh, disagrees with Rabbi Chaim and gives an alternative explanation. My father had an answer to his question, but I want to suggest an altogether uh, different answer today. Uh, it's getting late, so I don't want to go into all the other answers, but the, the, um, what I want to suggest is the, 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 the Torah tells us uh, there are two psukim. One pasuk is in, in Parshish Mishpatim, Perich uh, of Gimel, Pasuk Yid Aleph. The Gemara says that the six, six years you shall plant your fields. It's talking about Eretz Yisrael. And the Basapta Tuasa, and you will, you will gather to everything that grows in the land, wheat, but it's, that, that has reference to the agricultural product that grows in the land. But the Shon HaShviyas on the seventh year, the seventh year is, is Shemitah. The seventh year is Shemitah, is the, you're not allowed to work the land. And uh, the Das Genemi Balatosphus says, when the Torah says, cites a medrash, that the medrash says that six years you should work on the land. And you shall gather it in, take it into your house, me making it accessible for usage. So it says it's a mitzvah. And, it, and the, the Das Kemba Tosvis mentions in the name of Rabbeinu Moshe that he thinks that this medrash and the simple reading of the Pasuk would indicate that way, that this, this medrash is talking only in Eretz Yisrael. Because in Eretz Yisrael, the more agricultural products you produce, the more mitzvahs of Tumos and Maestros, the mitzvahs of Tluyus Baris that you will have. So, in other words, it would seem to me, and where and what's the mitzvah? And you shall gather the produce that you planted. And that applies only in Eretz Yisrael. So, what does gather the produce mean? Gather the produce doesn't mean to gather the produce, to destroy it, to burn it. The first three years, the Orla was burned and it had to be destroyed. You were not allowed to derive benefit from it. According to Rambam, it was a negation of the, of the practices of the idolatrous nations in the time of Abraham Avinu. So what's, what's the idea? But the idea is that Pasatas Tvuasa in Eretz Yisrael, there's a special mitzvah in gathering the, in planting and in growing and in gathering the produce. Where there is a mitzvah, what is the mitzvah? The mitzvah shows us, uh, at one hand, it shows us of our special connection, the connection that God has with the land of Israel. Now, even if there is a mitzvah of Netar Advai outside the land of Israel. But it wouldn't come within this mitzvah of Asapta Tvuasa. Asapta Tvuasa only applies in the land of Israel because the Pasuk you see is talking about Shemitah, and Shemitah is talking about the land of Israel. And it's interesting, there, there, there is a also. In Parsha Sekev, in the Parsha of, of Kriyashma, it says, Vasafta de Ganecha. 
So you should gather in your grain, your wine, and all that. There's a special mitzvah the Gemara in Brachas mentions, gathering in, and the Sam Sofa says, that's talking about Eretz Yisrael. So in other words, part of the mitzvah of Yish of Eretz Yisrael is in a sense, uh, cultivating the land, uh, 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 raising agricultural product in the land. And it's very interesting. The question is, we see, we, we see that the Avos, the patriarchs, for the most part, they were not farmers. For the most part, they were shepherds. They, Avram Avinu was a shepherd. Yaakov was a shepherd. Yaakov, uh, uh, he went to help his brothers out, whatever happened. But Yitzchak, Yitzchak is the one who is identified with planting on the land. He was also a shepherd, but he also planted on the land. And when you take a look at the Yavo, as a matter of fact, uh, my uncle would mention that what, why did the brothers of, ya, uh, of, of Yosef feel threatened? Why did the brothers of Yosef feel threatened by, by, uh, uh, by Yosef's dreams? Because the, uh, Yosef dreamt, we are in the fields. And in Eretz Yisrael, the Jewish people at that point, up to that point, for the most part, they were shepherds. So the, the fact that things will change, they felt threatened by that. And in a sense, the Jewish people, by going down to Egypt, initially they were shepherds, but then they had to chalabodesh basada. They worked in the fields. Apparently it became necessary for the Jewish people to change from shepherds, not that there's a problem, that from shepherds to become farmers. Why is it that way? I think when somebody works on the land, he becomes more identified with the land. A shepherd is somebody who moves from place to place. A farmer doesn't move from place to place. He stays where he is. It's a demonstration Avram had to move from place to place in Eretz Yisrael to show that all of Eretz Yisrael is his. But it's, we have to conquer Eretz Yisrael. And we have to keep all of Eretz Yisrael. But we have to show permanence in the land. And farming is a demonstration of permanence, much more so than being a shepherd. And it's very interesting. The one Av of Klal Yisrael, who is identified with the land of Israel throughout his whole life, was Yitzchak, the one who did farming, who went to Torah tells us by Yisrael Yitzchak, he planted. Yitzchak is the one who gave maestros. So planting is identification with the land. We find lots today, Baruch Hashem, we find people going to live in Territ Yisrael. I'm not, I'm not pushing that people have to become farmers. But very often, they're not going to Territ Yisrael because of Eretz Yisrael. They're going to Eretz Yisrael, to the land of Israel, because of the environment that Eretz Yisrael provides for them. There is something lacking. Years ago, when Jews went to Eretz Yisrael, it wasn't just because of the environment. There was sacrifice involved. And that's something that I think we're lacking more and more so. That is the farmer perspective. You don't have to be farmers, but you have to have that perspective. And in Yomatzmut, I think that's an important factor. The idea 
of identification with the land, not just with the community of the land. Of course, we want to identify with the Torah community in Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael affords us opportunities for learning that you cannot find anywhere else. But Eretz Yisrael is important in itself also. And we have to go to Eretz Yisrael to identify. And when we go to Eretz Yisrael, we're identifying with the former generations as well as the future generations as well. And this is the idea of the, of the so this, this is the idea of Eretz Yisrael, the, the planting, the agricultural, the agricultural aspects of the, of the land. A tree is something that you don't just plant for one year. A tree is there for many, a tree is there for many years. So I want to suggest that when the Yerushalmi says that, when the Yerushalmi tells us that who was exempt from going to certain wars, somebody who, who planted Chil Shal Mitzvah, he, 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 he took in the, the, uh, the, a person who there was a mitzvah in him who, 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 uh, who, who did not yet fulfill the mitzvah, but was looking forward to fulfilling the mitzvah. The mitzvah was the mitzvah that is associated with Yeshiv Eretz Yisrael, with living in the land of Israel. It's interesting that Yerushalmi says the same thing about building a house. Someone who just built a house below Hanacho, and he did not initiate living in the house yet. So it says only a house in Eretz Yisrael. What's the mitzvah in having a house? It's a mitzvah of Yishev Eretz Yisrael. You're contributing to the building up of Eretz Yisrael, to the land of Eretz Yisrael. So the same thing is true. It's not just the Yerushalmi is not talking, I want to suggest, not just about any mitzvah. Yes, in the Chutz it's according to the Gonin, there is a mitzvah also of taking the fruit to Yerushalayim or redeeming it with coins and then eating the fruit here and then using the, the money to buy other food when you go to Yerushalayim. But, but it's not a mitzvah. It's not a mitzvah of Yishev Eretz Yisrael. It doesn't contribute to the upbuilding to show the permanence of the Jewish people in the land of Israel. Perhaps the mitzvah of Netaravai, the mitzvah, the, but when, the, when, the, when the, the Torah tells us that who, who was exempt, only one who was looking forward to, to fulfilling the mitzvah of the Chalolo, of redeeming the fruit or eating the fruit in Yerushalayim, it's talking about fruits in Eretz Yisrael because that is a fulfillment of the mitzvah of Asaf the Ganecha, which is part of the mitzvah of Yishu of Eretz Yisrael. It contributes to the building up of Eretz Yisrael and more than just the building up of Eretz Yisrael. As I mentioned before, in Eretz Yisrael, when, why is there a mitzvah of, of, of land of, of building farming in Eretz Yisrael and all that. It's imbuing, we're producing Trumosa Maestros, Mitzvahs Hatul Yasparitz. Why is that? That's to imbue Eretz Yisrael with spirituality. Eretz Yisrael can't be, you can have Torah in Williamsburg, you can have Torah in Crown Heights, you can have Torah in Lakewood, you can have Torah wherever you are. But Eretz Yisrael is Eretz Yisrael. None of these areas, not any of these areas, they're not Eretz Yisrael. And the, the Eretz Yisrael represents our link with the Avos, and more than that, it re represents our link with future generations as well. And I think that's the, that's the way we can understand. Yes, there might even be a mitzvah of Netaravai in Chutzlar, it's according to the Gonim. But it's not the mitzvah of Netaravai that's part of the mitzvah of Yishev Eretz Yisrael, of living in Eretz Yisrael. And the living in Eretz Yisrael, identification with Eretz Yisrael, that's the Asafta, it's the Ganecha. It's imbuing Eretz Yisrael 
the mundane with the spirituality, Eretz Yisrael, more than any other land. It is a land that we have to, we have to imbue this, the physical with the spiritual as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. We have um, a few questions already. So anyone who has a question, please put it in the chat. Um, what is uh, the, the this law of of uh, Orlan Ravai of Eretz Yisrael apply uh, for Ruvain and God on the other side of the Yardin also? Uh, I, it's quite, I, I have to look into it. I think it does apply, but it didn't apply till the Jews entered Eretz Yisrael, entered the rest of Eretz Yisrael. So the 14 years after that? 14 years, yeah. Um, uh, here is a Derek Agav question. What's halacha when the year of Netaravai coincides with Shemitah? <laughs> it's an interesting question. Huh? It's an okay. interesting question. I have to, have to look into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, someone asked if uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 okay. So he'll deal with Shemitah is the Arisa and when Netaravai is the Arisa. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, going back to what you said about the brachos, when we make brach on food, it sanctifies our food. Uh, no, I, I didn't say it sanctifies it, our food. Sanctifies our eating. Sanctifies our eating. What if we uh, make our uh, brachas as autopilot and we don't have proper kavana? <laughs> I guess it would be on a lesser level. Did anyone else have a question? Please put it in. Yeah, it clearly uh, it, it would apply to the other side because uh, it was Moshe. It, it was Moshe. Yeah, so you see, it didn't. The, the Ram says it didn't apply to Surya, so uh, so it certainly that that shouldn't be any worse than that. I mean. So that Surya is, you, is where it doesn't apply. So it clearly applied to the other side of the yard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the question left over from last week, I guess, and my audio wasn't working. Why do we wait so many potential double partios before we resync our Torah readings with Israel? Because I, I, I thought I answered it. The 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 answer is that that the the till Shavuos. We have to treat the days till Shavua says they're all suffering, as it's a doubt, because because really there was no doubt at Shavua, but Shlo Lachlo Bemoados and not to differentiate between. I don't want to say it over the whole share, so I'm just saying a, a summary. The Shlo Lachlo Bemoados, so we have to treat the second the second day of Shavuos as if it possibly could be the first. So we have to make believe like we don't know which day was which day was Pesach. Since we have to make believe we don't know which day is Pesach until the second day of Shavuos. So so therefore we 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 don't double up the sedras. And then after Shavuos you don't have any two sedras. Uh, you don't you don't have any two sedras that are to get that, that you can put together a filmatos masa. Well, chukas balak we do in chutzar. It's usually if if Shavuos second day is Shabbos in chutzar. It's we do chukas uh, balak together. Chukas uh, chukas balak. Yeah, uh, I think in Eretz Yisrael they never read chukas balak as a double parsha, but here we in chutzar we do if the second day of Shavuos is Shabbos. So yeah. we catch up there to show that. Okay. Well, why Chukas Bolak not? Okay. I, I, I would have to I have to look into why Chukas Bolak or not. My guess is uh, I would suggest that uh, they, it, perhaps they wanted to do with Tisha B'Av, uh, putting the Jews together. Uh, uh, they, 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 they wanted to put the the Jews, the Jews together, in other words, because in a sense, we're looking forward to the Jews of Eretz Yisrael, and we focus on the Chorban, 
So we're looking forward to the Jewish people returning, returning to Eretz Yisrael as one people. So we want to sort of say to catch up uh, with the Jews of Eretz Yisrael. That would be my sense. That's uh, but the Takanas Azra was more important for Tishabov than Shavuos to read a certain parsha by Shavuos. Yes, right. That's right. As we see, normally both, we both, normally both. normally we it was read both. In other words, we, we I would say it was for both. In other words, the the reason they didn't do it right away, and then once they once they uh, once they didn't do it uh, right away, once they didn't do it right away, so they postponed it till Tishabov. So in a sense, it should represent when we focus on the Horb and the Jewish people being united, returning to Eretz Yisrael. Okay. Um, your uncle, the Rav Yashabir, mentioned that the Avos only had Kenyan Peros in Eretz Yisrael in the time of the Avos. So how could Yitzchak have planted and given Truma and Meiser? They could only okay. take fruits, but they couldn't. They didn't necessarily own it enough. To okay, you can, you can ask even better than that. You can ask you can ask questions about about when it comes to uh, to the to the uh, to 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 Trumas and Meishas, You need Rov Yoshbel Aleha according to Rambam and all that all of that. So we have to say that 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 is part of the. Uh, uh, so first of all, it, it seems uh, the I think the Mabit says that even though the circumstances are not mechay of trumos maestros, but the there is a fulfillment of the mitzvahs of trumos maestros in Eretz Yisrael. I think that my bit might say something along those lines. But even if he didn't say that, that's part of the idea that the Yavos observed the mitzvahs of Torah. In other words, they set a precedence for future generations. Okay. It wasn't necessarily a requirement, but that's something that they did. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's all we have for today. No more questions. So. Um...